All right, so they stuck me with the first slot. I'm a little nervous, admittedly. So I need your help. What we're going to do is, on the count of three, I want everybody to scream. And I don't mean like a woo, I'm at a rap show kind of scream. I want you to dig deep, scream for your life for me on the count of three. No inhibitions. One, two, three. <laughs> yes. All right, how did that? Everybody's smiling. Everybody's happy. You feel good about that, don't you? All right, what we're talking about tonight is comparing something called horror cinema, which is a popular form of entertainment that deals with fear, trauma, and battling demons. And we're going to look at it in conjunction with psychotherapy and psychoanalysis, which deals with fear, trauma, and battling demons. So why horror? This is the big question of not only my four years at Gallatin, but all the way growing up. I loved horror movies. You know, I got to Gallatin, my advisor, Keith Miller, always phrased it this way, what, what's, a, what's a good guy like you doing in a genre like this? Because I'm a nice guy, I'm happy, but I love horror movies. So for the past four years, I've encountered a few different theorists, great thinkers, who seem to contribute a little bit to what I'm thinking about. First, we'll talk about the death drive. This is Sigmund Freud, who said, if we are able to take it as truth that knows no exception, that everything living dies for internal reasons, becomes inorganic once again, then we shall be compelled to say that the aim of all life is death. Friedrich Nietzsche says cruelty is a part of the festive joy of the ancients and indeed is an ingredient in nearly every pleasure they have. So looking at this, we have that the aim of all life is death, that we love the spectacle of cruelty. So is it really any wonder that we have Saw 5 already at this point? <laughs> that 6 and 7 are already on their way? That this is the highest grossing horror franchise of all time? And anybody who's seen a Saw film knows that, it, objectively, there's no cinematic, cinematic merit in these films. All it is is people getting tortured over and over again. So I want to talk a little bit about projection, because I think that when you're in the cinema, you have two forms of projection going on. You have the obvious form, which is when there's a little projector up top shining the image on the screen. You get to watch it. Everybody's having fun. The other form goes on in everybody's individual psyches, because when we're in the theater, we're throwing up all of our emotions onto the screen and identifying with certain characters. So with a franchise like Friday the 13th, for example, there are 12 films in that franchise already. So what is it that keeps people coming back? There's only one constant in all of these sequels, and that's that Jason comes back to kill more teenagers. <laughs> that's who we're identifying with, folks, because let's be honest with ourselves. We all have you know, ex-roommates, ex-lovers, teachers that we wouldn't mind giving the old <laughs> treatment to. We're not allowed to do that, though. In the real life, we're not allowed to do that. So we go to the films, we throw up our emotions on Jason, we let him take care of our dirty work in a very safe fashion. So what we're really talking about is the return of the repressed. And horror theorist Robin Wood sums it up nicely. He says, one might say that the true subject of the horror genre is the struggle for recognition of all that our civilization represses and oppresses. It's re-emergence dramatized as in our nightmares, as an object of horror, as a matter of terror, and the happy ending when it exists, typically signifying the restoration of repression. So this idea of repression is the idea that there are a lot of things that our society says no to. For example, aggression. And it's forced back into our unconscious. But horror films bring them out as monsters. For example, zombies are the proletariat. George A. Romero, Night of the Living Dead filmmaker, always said that zombies are my blue-collar monster. They are the masses. Alternative ideologies, communism, the invasion of communism becomes displayed as the invasion of body-snatching aliens, naturally. Children, we are terrified of children in our culture. <laughs> Look how scary that is. These little guys that, that slightly resemble us but have no inhibitions whatsoever, they're the Antichrist. <laughs> of course, what would horror be without the monstrous feminine? Sigmund Freud himself said there's only one person in the world that he would never attempt to psychoanalyze, and that's his wife. And of course, in our culture in particular, we're terrified of sexuality, of our human body, so that the myth of the vagina dentata becomes literalized in a film about, well, vagina dentata. <laughs> what we're dealing with here is facing fears. Horror films help us to face fears. And as Wes Craven put it, he's a prolific horror filmmaker, horror films don't create fear, they release it. They're boot camp for the psyche. So the idea is horror dredges up all of these things that we repress, and we can't be pushing them back all the time. That's when we get neuroses. We need to be facing our fears, because the world's a scary place, and horror films help us to realize that. 
His first film, Last House on the Left, came out in 1972. This was Vietnam War era. There was all sorts of violence and disillusionment going on. And as you can see, this poster looks like it was torn straight from the headlines of a real newspaper, reflecting that fake horror, fictional horror, comes from real horror. It came with this little warning. To avoid fainting, keep repeating. It's only a movie. Only a movie. Only a movie. Now, how many people in 1972 you think actually took comfort in this? Do you think the filmmaker actually wanted to comfort his audience with this little phrase? You don't find comfort in it. It's ironic, and it's actually mocking you, because we know the truth is that this isn't only a movie, that horror films reflect real realities, real horrors, and we need to start dealing with them to start working out our demons. So when we look at a film like Saw, is it only a movie? When we look at this poor girl in a head trap, this torturous situation, this is just the warped mind. Some, some warped filmmaker threw this on the screen just straight out of his psyche. He didn't, it's, it's not real, is it? Or do horror films reflect real realities, real horrors that we need to start dealing with and facing as soon as we can? Thank you. Stay scared.